Hey everybody, I'm Michelle Roy of Dragonfly Wellness and this is an extra video for the subscribers about pujas and altar making and things like that. Uh, this is a follow-up to a post I had made, um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, um, but then I thought I'd follow it up with a video for the subscribers only. Uh, so this is, when we talk about altars and puja, um, puja translates as worship. It, it generally um, is refers to an altar that you have, or you can perform the act of puja, which is um, acts of worship, acts of devotion. And they could be to anything, um, whatever your something bigger is. And I also do, I have several different points of the, the post I had made for the, maybe you didn't catch that if you're a YouTube follower, you probably didn't see it on the socials. Um, was about uh, this sacred space that I have. It's next to my bed, it's on my nightstand for my cat, for a, one of my very special cats. And I have like a little, a small altar that I keep for him there. I put fresh flowers on it and it has some precious objects around it, some crystals that I've compiled for him uh, to demonstrate his, or that represent his qualities and that kind of thing. So this is a follow-up to that. This I thought I would share my studio space with you and show you some of the different places that I have that are, are um, my various altars. So let's have a little office tour. Off we go. So I, um, I often use this screen as my backdrop. Um, you can see that I have, this is a recent acquisition of this fabulous ohm that I found. It's actually a neon light. Um, the wiring is still good in it. I might light it up one day, but I've decided that's going to live there. But I have Guan Yin, uh, the Chinese goddess of compassion, is really important to me in my practice. And so this is one of my favorites there. She's surrounded by quartz crystal chakra stones. Um, I've got, I, these are gifts from clients, dragonflies, and of course, Ganesha. I found this Ganesha in Soho in New York. Uh, many of you know I collect Ganesha. I love Ganesha. He's my patron. This is a beautiful Buddha that was given to me um, as a as a uh, housewarming gift. Well, like a I guess a a studio warming gift. Uh, another gift from a student. Another gift from a student. She made this this for me. It's Ganesha by the door always. And another Ganesha here. Then I have this little corner here. Um, my elephant I bought from a street vendor years ago. She's been with me for a long time. Her name's Ellie. And a little Lily. And then, of course, resting Buddha there. And they are adorned by this little corner piece, which is made of coconuts. Um, and then this is my main altar here. So this is where I do. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a video about messages. So that's kind of where those things would live if I was doing that. I've cleared this now for summer because I'm getting ready to go up to the mountains for summer. So um, it's blank and open, and these are my crystal bowls that I use before and after meditation, to open and close my meditation. Um, got some plants in the windows there. And that one, this was a gift from a friend, a fellow teaching friend. And then over here, this is my, what I call my Reiki altar. It um, is this beautiful um, candle holder that was given to me by a friend, by a dear friend. And again, that lotus flower was a gift from a client and that giant selenite was a gift to myself. Um, but this is where I send, I uh, will use this as a focal point for distance Reiki when I'm doing distance Reiki for people. Um, you know, just different, different Reiki wishes for peace, etc. And then adjacent to that, I have, this is my abundance shelf, my abundance, you know, uh, puja. So I have the Reiki ideals there in the corner by this happy, by the happy abundant Buddha and uh, lots of amethyst, as you can see. And then here, another Guan Yin, uh, this is another beautiful one. And it has one of my very favorite, favorite crystals here. This is an amethyst within a blue lace agate. And then of course the amethyst candle. And then this beauty hang, hung in a studio here in Sarasota for many, many years. It was the first studio I ever taught at and it's no longer in existence, so she's super precious to me. I have Buddha up there. That was also a gift from a student, and more elephants, also gifts. Um, and then I have green Tara 
Buddha and another Kuan Yin here. Um, that's another special, special shelf. This is also a precious object, another beautiful Balinese dancer. Um, so those are, these are kind of, the, these are how, that's how I, so they have different intentions. They're all important, they're all precious to me. Um, it's all just points of, just collections of things that are precious to me. And then they hold that energy and I work with them and I bless them and I, I remember when I see these, the, you know, the people and the places that I receive, so they hold a very special energy and I keep them clean and I light the candles and, you know, freshen them with incense and things like that. Or other scents, you can also use essential oils if you don't care for incense. So anyway, those are the ways we make everyday objects sacred is just by giving them a special place and honoring that place that they hold in our lives and also recognizing the beauty of non-attachment like if someone were to come and take all of this away tomorrow there's a part of my heart that would say oh but then there's a part of me that would be really liberated from having all kinds of things so um you know collect wisely i guess is probably the lesson there anyway i just wanted to share a little bit of my florida studio with you before i head north to the mountains so i hope you enjoyed that you have a fantastic day and i'll see you again soon namaste everybody